Hey there, welcome back to the channel. You may recall that I recently reviewed the Samsung Godyssey Neo G7 43-inch gaming monitor. Well, today I've got another one that is worth considering. Let me introduce the QN90C. This is one of Samsung's latest and greatest QLED TV models for this year, and it's available in a 43-inch size. Now, given that both the Odyssey Neo G7 and the QN90C have a similar price tag and screen size, plus they each boost a VA panel. So to help you deciding which one to get, I will review the QN90C and comparing it to the Neo G7. This way, you will know which one could potentially end up on your desk. So let's get started. As soon as you unbox it, you will be greeted with the handy quick installation guide and a user manual. But wait, there is more. You will also find the common interface card slot and let's not forget the cherry on top, take off friendly TV remote, which harness the power of ambient light to stay charged and you can always Use it up with a trusty USB Type-C cable that's sadly not included. And here is a side-by-side -side snapshot of the Q90C and the Neo G7 remotes. At first glance, they might seem like twins separated at first, but it's not the fact. The Neo G7s lacks the charge by ambient light feature, as you can see here. Moving on, let's talk about the stand mount, which is made out of plastic. But the disc stand is a whole other story. It's an all metal and quite heavy and even heavier compared to the Neo G7s. And there's a good reason for that extra bulk. This stand is designed to support TVs up to a whopping 50 inches. When it's time to install the stand, you will find the necessary screws neatly tucked away in a bag for assembly. However, it's worth noting that the Neo G7 stand has a slight edge in this department. Its pre-installed screws are designed to stay put, ensuring you won't lose them and making the installation process a no-brainer. But while the Q90C is all about stability and style, the Neo G7 focuses on convenience and user-friendliness. Now, let's get to the back of the TV where you will find that familiar plastic material we mentioned earlier. Over on the right side, there is a power source plug, and in the center lies the mounting area designed to accommodate both wall mounts and compatible arms with a size of VESA 200x mm. And last but not the least, the left side is where you will find all the input ports. Before we get deeply into the inputs we have, I've got an intriguing observation to share with you. When I apply some pressure to the back of the TV, you can actually see the back panel flexing ever so slightly. In comparison, the Neo G7 stands ground, showcasing a more robust and sturdy construction. Alright, moving on to the input ports, the QN90C offers two USB ports, an audio optical port, four HDMI ports with one supporting eARC, as well as a LAN port and finally, antenna inputs. Also, it's worth noting that it supports HDMI 2.1, so it's ready for your next-gen gaming consoles such as the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. On the bright side, the Q90C proves itself to be quite stable on disk, outshining the Neo G7 in this regard. With the Neo G7, even the slightest disk movement caused the monitor to wobble, perhaps due to its smaller stand. In contrast, the Q90C stands firmly on the disk. I also managed to snugly fit my Katana soundbar beneath the stand. However, it's crucial to point out that the height clearance is a tad lower than that of the Neo G7, coming up short by around 3 cm. Even though the TV has its own built-in decent speakers, if you are planning to park a soundbar under the TV, ensure it doesn't exceed 7 cm in height. The QN90C has an anti-glare coating, setting it apart from the matte finish found on the Neo G7. And in my opinion, this glossy touch not only gives better contrast and colors, but also adds a touch of elegance and beauty to the display. And the result, a truly stunning visual experience, especially when enjoying a dark room. And what's more, thanks to the anti-glare coating it has, even when faced with direct sunlight through a nearby window, the screen manages to minimize the glare, also giving the TV high brightness that allows you to fully enjoy regardless of the lighting condition. When you power up the TV, you will be greeted by the familiar Tizen OS, just like the Neo G7, but with the addition of the ambient mode. And most models also support Samsung DeX, a feature I personally adore when using my Galaxy phone. The wireless connectivity makes it an ultra-convenient perk 
or Galaxy phone owners use their phones in a desktop-like experience. Going into the multi-view feature, you will find the option to display an input alongside an app or even screen mirroring. For instance, I was able to showcase both my PS5 and laptop simultaneously. The same feature is also available on the Neo G7. Alright now, let's get into the settings and explore picture options that the QN90C has to offer. With the TV connected to my PC, I have game mode activated, so some options are grayed out. In the picture export settings, I have both brightness and contrast with their maximum values, sharpness to 10 by default, and color to 32 or added vividness. For local dimming, we have three choices that are low, standard, and high. I recommend keeping it on high as it delivers impressive local dimming performance, which I'll demonstrate later in the test. When adjusting the contrast enhancer, you can choose between high, low, and off. As you can see, there is a visible difference between the modes. I personally prefer the high option. One key difference in picture setting compared to the Neo G7 is the ability to change the HDR tone mapping between static and active. The Neo G7 doesn't have this option, and you can see the difference in picture quality here. When connected to PC, fail mode is deactivated. However, you can still adjust the color tone, I kept mine on a standard, and you can also adjust the white balance, I kept mine to default. For PC, the gamma mode is set to ST2084, and you can increase or decrease the gamma intensity. I also reduce the shadow detail to minus 5 for deeper plaques, as shown in the comparison here. And in the color space settings, you can switch between native, auto, and custom. Overall, the primary difference in picture options between the Neo G7 and the QN90C is the HDR tone mapping feature. Let's get to the sound settings. And here you have the option to change the audio output. And moreover, heading into the export settings, you will find various adjustable parameters to fine tune the audio experience. Important to note that the QN90C supports Dolby Atmos. On the other hand, the Neo G7 has this option grayed out, making me believe it doesn't support it after all. By navigating to the connection settings, you can view and manage network, check the list of connected Bluetooth devices, and access Apple AirPlay. I don't have an Apple device, so I'll take a shortcut and get over the game mode settings. In the game mode settings, you can toggle the mode on, off, or set it to auto. You can also adjust the surround sound for the speakers and modify the dynamic plug equalizer. Unfortunately, the game motion plus function is disabled when using a PC. Within the game picture export settings, you will find options such as HDR10 plus gaming, which I have set to advanced, and you also have the ability to enable game HDR if supported by the game you are playing. As far as the menu settings are concerned, the only difference is that the Neo G7 has the ability to change the response time, whereas the QN90C has it on fastest when game mode is turned on. Now, going to general section, you will find intelligent mode settings. However, when using game mode on PC, most of those settings are grayed out, with the exception of the adaptive volume. Ok, now let's head over to the power and energy saving settings. Here you can adjust various options, such as enabling a screen saver, setting auto power off, and more. Additionally, you can view the available battery level of the remote and learn how to charge it. Quite neat if you ask me. Also, you have the option to customize your start screen preferences. You can choose whether you want the TV to start with a smart hub or go directly to an input source. This kind of smart stuff you already know guys. In the support section, you can manage software updates. I encourage you to enable auto update or frequently check for a new update manually, as these TVs often receive valuable enhancements over time. Currently, I have the latest version installed, which is 1105. And under device care, you can check and diagnose issues, request support, and manage local storage or delete apps, etc. Okay, now that I got over the settings I wanted to show, I'll go ahead and disable game mode to showcase some differences in the picture settings. With game mode off, you now have two different picture modes to choose from, which are entertain and graphic. Also, in the sound settings, you can now activate intelligent sound mode, switching between standard and amplify. Moreover, with intelligent mode enabled, active voice amplifier and adaptive sound plus options become available. Also to note that eye comfort and adaptive picture features are still not functional in PC mode. 
Quite neatly, you can access and adjust most of the features we have discussed so far on the fly by using the quick settings menu. And with the game mode enabled, you can use the gaming bar which basically allows you to change picture modes, aspect ratio and activate minimap zoom. And as mentioned earlier, the game motion plus feature remains unfunctional when connected to a PC. So, the options in the gaming bar complement the game mode settings we have explored so far. I'm using an NVIDIA RTX GPU and I can confirm that the QI90C does not support G-Sync and not even G-Sync compatible. It only supports AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. However, from my experience, I personally didn't find G-Sync compatible to be a useful feature as I have previously used it on my LG C242 inch and still experience screen tearing in FPS games. In such cases, opting for vSync provided the best results for me. I personally found that AMD FreeSync Premium Pro significantly reduced screen tearing on my AMD GPU, more so than the G-Sync compatible Singy. This is worth noting for those who are using an AMD GPU as the QA90C FreeSync support may provide a more satisfying gaming experience in terms of reduced screen tearing. I'm using Windows 11 and I have Auto HDR enabled and the SDR brightness set to 35. You can further calibrate HDR using this app here that I highly recommend. All you need to do is to follow the guided instructions within the app and this calibration process is quite similar to how you will do it on PS5 or Xbox. Alright, now that we have got everything set up and running, let's check some HDR picture quality footage to see the QA90C in action. Please enjoy. Now onto the local dimming test.
As you can see, the QA90C delivers impressive local dimming performance. While it's difficult to fully capture on video, in person it's noticeably better than the Neo G7. Samsung hasn't provided specific details regarding the number of local dimming zones, maybe 360 or more, I'm not sure. I couldn't find anywhere I looked, so if you know, please write in the comment down below the exact number of zones. But my guess is that the AI chip in the QA90C has been trained to handle local dimming better. And given that the Neo G7 doesn't have that chip, make me think twice, it may be the reason behind this one doing better in local dimming. But feel free to correct me if I'm wrong guys, don't want to spread strong info. From my daily usage for the past weeks and especially that I use it for PC, I can say with full heart that the QA90C offers great local dimming without being distracting. You will notice some blooming mostly in black backgrounds, but honestly, it's not that horrible. Also to note, it's the closest I've seen to an OLED in terms of black levels. During the color uniformity test on the QA90C, I noticed some variations in brightness, particularly when viewing one color screen from different angles, this phenomenon known as dirty screen effect. But loosening the back mount screws has somehow helped me. I recommend not over tightening the screws, but rather securing them just enough to hold the stand and avoid excessive pressure on the backlight panel. Although those variations fall within acceptable levels, I did not observe this issue with the Neo G7 or the LG C2. Now, let's move on to the UFO motion latency test. I have game mode turned on and you can see some ghosting effects if you pause the video. But the QA90C's motion latency performance is noticeably better than the Neo G7. The Neo G7's motion latency was so bad that it could cause eye strain if you try to keep up with it. While the QA90C has ghosting when scrolling down, you still see less text trailing. Additionally, if you scroll extremely fast, the ghost effect becomes almost imperceptible. Comparing the results to my previous video on the Neo G7, the QN90C definitely comes out on top in this aspect as I have been daily testing it and noticed an improved motion latency than the Neo G7. And as you can see here, the text clarity is quite great, the text appears sharp and clear and I haven't encountered any issues by reading text. Ok now let's take a look at some PC gameplay footages on HDR, enjoy this drive through the vibrant night city in Cyberbank 27.7. Next up, we venture into the stunning environment of Dead Island 2. You will notice how the QA90C handles HDR beautifully, showcasing vivid colors and impressive brightness and contrast levels. It's an immersive experience that keeps your eye glued to the screen. Even in a room filled with sunlight, as you can see, the TV high brightness and color capability allow you to see every detail without any struggle. The QA90C truly delivers a fantastic gaming experience.
when using the QA90 series with the PS5, all video features such as VRR and ALLM are activated. I have configured the HDR settings as well and the good news is, is that the Game Motion Plus works on the PS5. This allows you to choose between level 1 and level 2 as well as tweak blur and jitter reduction providing more motion options. Here is some different footages of Horizon Forbidden West on the PS5 with HDR enabled and Game Motion Plus set to level 2. For that, all we can do is be pray. That won't stop me from praying for our survival. In conclusion, for me, the Samsung QA90 C43 inches checks all the boxes, delivering an outstanding gaming and working experience. With this smart TV on your disk, you don't have to worry about burn in or the auto brightness limiter (ABL) making it one of the best TVs in its class that's built to last for years to come. I truly hope this video has provided you with a clear idea of what the Samsung QN93 43 inches offers. And I want to emphasize that this video is solely based on my personal experience. I don't want you to believe that it's biased or sponsored, but I just spoke out my mind. I genuinely believe this TV is fantastic and would recommend it to anyone looking for a TV slash monitor with this size and specifications. My message to Samsung is that they should improve the motion latency and color uniformity further, while also adding G-Sync to make it more appealing for some users. If there is anything I missed in this video or if you have questions, please leave a comment down below and if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel as your support helps me create more and better content for all of you. Also, feel free to join our Discord server, we will be happy to have you aboard. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video and remember, you are awesome.